some computer scientists theorize that there is a perfectly realistic chance that a speck of cosmic radiation could come shooting down from space, pass through an SD card at the exact moment of writing a precise sequence of zeros and ones. And that's how we got Paddington 2. What's happening everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel for the first installment in a new series we're doing here on the channel called LPTG Workbench. These videos are going to be a bit more topic focused rather than focused on like a specific piece of gear. And that Paddington 2 fact, well, maybe I've been spending too much time on obscure internet forums, but the topic of today's first workbench video is going to be about formatting media and corrupted files. Super basic crash course, if you've shot on anything that requires interchangeable media, and that's basically anything other than your mobile phone, then you've probably encountered this scenario of having to format a memory card or at the very least being at the computer and trying to retrieve your data from a complex series of folders within folders within folders. So why is it like that? We are going to chat about file structures and all that, but first let's give you a quick debriefer on what formatting media does. So like newly produced cameras are digital. You can totally think about this thing if you want as like a little handheld imaging computer if you want. It's basically what it is. And since that's true, this device uses computer language to write data onto a memory card that then reads that data. And that relationship between data reading and writing is absolutely essential to everything we're about to talk about today. Now I can finally go on to describe what formatting media is and brush through a couple of scenarios where it's totally necessary or at least a good idea to format a memory card. So formatting media has pretty much two main purposes. I suppose the first one I should mention is formatting a piece of media is erasing all of the data on that piece of media. So before formatting, make sure that that data that's on that card is A, already safely backed up somewhere else, or B, okay to be deleted forever. But this is not the only purpose of formatting, and I'll go as far as to say is it's not even the most important purpose of formatting. Number two, formatting a piece of media, it's going to refresh or even entirely rewrite a file structure for new media to be recorded. Onto. And now with that quick explainer out of the way, I sort of want to transition into talking about a couple of scenarios that absolutely necessitate media formatting, or at the very least where formatting is just a really good idea. Okay, scenario A, not one that many people think of, but when media is brand new. Say I just got this card, ordered online, or from my local brick and mortar, took it out of the case, and threw it directly in my camera. But you should know that that card, it's formatted from whatever standards that card's manufacturer use. Point is, it's not going to have the camera that you're going to be using it with file structure on it. Grammar? Sure. So if that is the case, I would totally recommend you get that brand new piece of media, pop it into whatever camera you're going to be using it with, and format slash initialize that media in camera. And remember, it's about getting that proper file structure on there. By the way, more terminology. Camera manufacturers are going to use the terms format and initialize media basically interchangeably. And that leads me to scenario number two when you need to format media. Switching media over from camera to camera. If you can, I always recommend formatting a piece of media that was previously used in another camera. And I'm not even necessarily talking about across different manufacturers. If I was shooting on Canon and this card came from another Canon camera, I would still format this. You'd be surprised at how different file structures from two different camera models are, even under the same manufacturer. For example, here I'm opening up an SD card that was shot between a Nikon, a Canon, and a Sony camera without being formatted. I can tell that there's overlapping file structures used from each of those manufacturers. A little bit of Canon stuff here. If Sony stuff is gonna be in this private folder, this one's labeled Nikon. You see how a lot of stuff gets clumped into this DCIM folder? If you just switch media over from camera to camera without formatting, it's entirely possible for some pictures from, say, a Sony camera to end up in this DCIM folder 
of this Canon or Nikon. A perfect recipe for, oh my goodness, where's my footage? I lost my footage. Because you're looking for Sony pictures that were just somehow corralled into an old Canon folder. Okay, third scenario for when to format your media, and I feel like this one's kind of obvious, but I have to say it. It's when your media is getting full or straight up out of space. It's the best practice to shoot your media until it is almost full or all the way full, ejecting that media from your camera, backing up that media, getting it back into a camera, and then formatting that card to clear up your space again. And you're like, duh, like what is the alternative? Well, the alternative would be deleting items manually in camera. Pretty much every camera gives you the ability to delete single or even select multiple files to delete in a batch. And I think this is okay to do in a pinch. You're out and about shooting, you're getting close to filling up that memory card. You have no way of getting another card or dumping footage and you have to free up card space on the fly. I think it's okay to delete some media like that. But the reason I'm like softly warning against that is because your camera is actually doing this in a much less clean way than you'd probably expect. A lot of cameras only save images as previews, like thumbnail versions and such and such, and aren't actually deleting the full amount of media when you hit that delete button. And doing this repetitively over many shoots without ever formatting that piece of media, it could be leaving like hidden cache memory and data floating around on that SD card that's like totally invisible and may possibly cause a writing error from that card down the line. Camera manufacturers have really wisened up to these sorts of things, but I still think that this is a good practice to keep up with. So maybe I'm being a little overly paranoid, but I would try to avoid doing that at least for long repetitive periods of time. And you're like, why? What could even possibly go wrong? What am I trying to avoid here? Well, perfect segue into formatting scenario number four or corrupted media or reading writing errors. You will absolutely want to find a way to format that media if there are any corrupted files in that database or if whatever device you are trying to read data off that media from, I am winning the Grammar Olympics today. If either the reading or writing device is having trouble doing either of those with this card, then you're going to want to try your best to reformat that card. And you're like, Dom, I have questions questions about that right off the bat. If a piece of media can't be read by a device, it's not going to be able to be formatted by that device. Well, actually the answer a lot of the times is yes. Don't ask me why. And B, you're like, Dom, but the problem is my file got corrupted. That is the nightmare scenario right there. And if you came to this video looking for a solution to that, I wish the best of luck to you. you know, it is pretty rare that corrupted media can be recovered. It's honestly, it's a very large topic in and of itself. One, I could take a whole video in and of itself to explain. But that is exactly why I I am so emphatically stressing all of this extra practice and precaution so you avoid this scenario. So with that, I've gone on and on. These videos are supposed to be short anyways. So let me know what topics you would like to see covered in future LPTG Workbench videos. And shameless plug time, if you happen to like this video, you can hit that little like button underneath this video, give it a comment or a share. But if you didn't do any of that, you can subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell button next to the subscribe button. And that will keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. So try to avoid those cosmic rays when you are shooting and we'll see you in the next one.